Hello and konnichiwa. I am Prashant Kothari. I am the portfolio manager for the Pictet Indian Equities portfolio. I am in Japan today and trying to explain to you why you should consider Indian equities as one of the most attractive opportunities to invest and our Pictet Indian Equities fund as one of the avenues to invest into. Thank you very much for your time today. Sure. So the uh, key uh, points to understand about India are actually three. One is democracy, second is demographics, and the third is discipline. I will explain them one by one. By demographics, essentially, if you think about India, it is a massive country. It has 1.4 billion people, and the country is young. The average age of people is only 28 years, versus China, where it is 39 years, and versus Japan, which is almost 50 years. So the country is young, which means that there are more and more workers getting added to the population. So the next 20 years. We'll see this working age population is still expanding. This is in contrast to some place like China, where it has been contracting for the last 10 years, and this will give a huge boost in terms of the economic growth. The second point to understand about demographics is urbanization. So, still about two third of the population is living in the rural areas, and over the next 25 years, we'll see huge transition happening by which 300 million people will be going outside of rural areas into urban areas. Why that is important? It's important because urban people tend to work in more skillful jobs, things like working in offices and factories rather than working on the farms, and they tend to earn two and a half times more than their rural counterparts. So as that transition happens, as those 300 million people go from rural to urban areas, there'll be huge productivity boost to the economy. So all, all that will help India register very strong economic growth. So it has been growing at about six to seven percent GDP every year, and we believe that can continue for another about twenty years uh, to come. So that's the first uh, important point to understand about India, which is on demographics. The second point is on democracy. So India has a very strong democratic setup out there, which means that there is a very peaceful and smooth changeover of governments uh, from one to another. And the pro the policy making happens to be very progressive because the governments and the parties understand that they need to deliver upon economic progress in order to win, and that is why you have seen continuous reforms happening in India. The second part of uh, uh, democratic setup is also having strong institutions out there. So we have institutions like the central bank (RBI) and the Supreme Court, the stock market regulator (SEBI), and the election commission. All of them are very independent-minded, and they are all working in the interest of the country. And this ensures that the foundation of the Indian story is not just dependent upon who is in power at the moment, but the foundation is pretty strong to take India ahead for many decades to come forward. So those are the two uh, two important pillars: democracy and demographics. And the third important pillar is discipline. Now, the root of all this better behavior that you see in India is actually discipline. Uh, and how do you see that getting demonstrated? Again, is across different stakeholders. When it comes to people of India, there have been very disciplined savers out there. So the Indian saving rates are pretty high. Uh, they tend to save more and more into financial assets now, and all of that money is getting into equities also. That that's about the people. Then about the RBI, RBI, which is the Central Bank of India, they are considered as one of the best central banks around the world. They have been very uh, good in terms of managing both the monetary policy of, of of the country as well as the foreign exchange management. They are also the banking regulator, and they have ensured that the banking system is not facing any crisis. Then the third stakeholder out there is the government itself, uh, who is very fiscally disciplined. Uh, so last four years, we have seen that the fiscal deficit of India has been brought down from nine percent of GDP to five percent of GDP. So it's an amazing amount of fiscal dif, uh, discipline that we are seeing, and last but not the least, what we are interested in is the corporate discipline because we, as in equity investors, are investing in the corporates of India, and you see that the corporates of India are making very high returns on equity. So they make returns which are like 15% on their equity versus the emerging market counterparts, which are making roughly nine to 10% on an average. So this high return on equity. Is essentially a great recipe for making the returns that we investors make by investing into these companies. So I believe that the combination of these three powerful factors—democracy, discipline, and demographics—essentially make India a very, very attractive story out there. 
So uh, there are some very interesting opportunities in the Indian markets today, and these are very secular uh, growth opportunities out there. Uh, these are related to the sectors in finance, healthcare, IT services, and consumer internet. I'll touch upon them one by one. So essentially, on the financial side of of the sector, what we are seeing today is that while Indians are great savers, earlier those savings were going more towards physical assets, things like gold and real estate, and that is starting to shift, wherein Indians are saving more into financial assets. So these are things like bank deposits, mutual funds, or life insurance. and that is helping the companies in those sectors really grow very well in high double digits and still the penetration of all these uh, financial assets is pretty low in india like life insurance is only about 4% of gdp which is much lower than what you see globally and uh, th- this presents to us very interesting opportunities in uh, in uh, in this space uh, the second example we have is of the healthcare which is another interesting theme because healthcare in india is a very uh, branded play because indians tend to spend uh, money out of their own pocket rather than relying upon government run uh, facilities and therefore they tend to trust more upon branded private providers whether it is medicines or it is in hospitals so that is a sector which is growing at almost 10% cagr and that is uh, su- supposed to continue for a long period of time to come the third opportunity that we see is on the it services side so india has become a major source of uh, information technology services it is already 100 billion dollar industry in india uh, these companies are taking advantage of the indian demographics india produces huge number of engineering graduates every year and they can all talk in english they can all write in english which makes it e- very easy for for these companies to take advantage of that resource pool in order to cater to the global enterprises now the enterprises globally are always trying to shift their technology needs from what was yesterday important to what will be important tomorrow so whether it was white to k earlier or whether it was uh, salesforce earlier or whether it was cloud and now we are thinking about ai all these transitions are being held by the indian it services companies so indian it companies have 15% market share of the global it services and that is still growing so that's another very interesting area for us to consider the fourth and uh, very exciting opportunity still is the consumer internet opportunity so india is a bit late to that game uh, already we have seen emergence of several large consumer internet companies around the world and india is going to see the same in the next decade or so and already we are seeing emergence of very interesting companies across different areas whether it is online food delivery or whether it is online travel this is space is supposed to grow at almost 25% cagr from less than 200 billion dollars market today to almost a trillion dollar market opportunity in the next 7 years so these are very interesting themes all of which are very exciting for us to invest into uh, so about the current account deficit of india it was a problem about 10 years back when india was uh, clubbed under the fragile five countries uh, that was the period when the indian imports were high when oil prices also went up and because of that the overall external account balance became very unfavorable to india india has come a long way from there what has changed during the last 10 years essentially is that india has managed to increase its exports very well especially on the services side of things and now it is also growing its manufacturing exports well so it is actually taking advantage of its uh, demographics and low labor cost in order to drive up those industries and therefore now we are seeing that the current account deficit is almost roughly around 1% of gdp only which is much more manageable because the uh, capital flows into the country roughly account for around 2 to 2 and a half percent of gdp so there is a, a a positive balance of payments out there every year which is helping india actually accrue more foreign exchange reserves uh, which are standing very tall at uh, today at about 650 billion dollars so that's a huge uh, reserve that india has today so just in case if oil prices were to go up or if there was some wobble in terms of the global economy even then the indian uh, current account balance uh, is looking pretty resilient uh, to us today so we'll not really worry too much about it the only uh, risk factor out there would be if oil prices were to shoot up to something like 125 dollars or or higher than that that is when the equation is starts getting disturbing otherwise it should it's looking fairly comfortable today so uh, as i mentioned india has traditionally been stronger on the service export side but it is making good efforts uh, to uh, become the factory of the world as well rather than just being the office of the world 
okay and therein the programs like make in india and also the government schemes like production linked incentives are helping these incentives are essentially to encourage investments into areas like electronics uh, and uh, electric vehicles renewables chemicals and now also semiconductors so we are seeing that many global companies are setting up their bases in india so like apple has started making their latest iphones in india samsung has started their largest manufacturing facility globally in india uh, amd has started their largest design center in india so we are seeing lot of companies coming to india uh, getting attracted by these in, uh, by these incentives but also getting attracted by the opportunity that the indian economy itself presents to them so yes india is uh, making those efforts in order to become the next destination uh, for becoming the factory of the world after china obviously it is much smaller than where china is today and therefore it will take a long time before india can replace china i don't think it will be a matter of next 5 years it's probably a matter of next 15 20 years after which we can actually see india gaining as much as what china is today in terms of how to kind of play that uh we have some local companies uh, who are getting benefit from all this investment which is happening uh, if you think about investment into any factory uh, a essential requirement is having cables now that might seem like a very small component of any project but that's a very essential and critical part of a project because nobody wants to compromise on cables uh, which will go faulty after a period of time and then the entire project stops so one interesting company we have in the portfolio is kei industries they are a very high quality supplier of cables uh, for different needs and because of their quality uh, configurations the customers really love to order from them so the, that's a company which is seeing huge order book growth and uh, and they are seeing good expansion in margins as well so that's a that, that, that's an interesting example of how we are playing on this theme out there yeah so the caste system in india is very ancient right it has been around for thousands of years now uh but the good news out there that it is also changing for better uh the the barriers are breaking down the discrimination which we used to see is not as much anymore i won't say that it has completely gone away but it has reduced a lot and the good uh, a good demonstration of that is what you see as acceptability of people from low caste into high positions as an example uh, the current president of india which is the highest uh, position in india comes from a low caste tribal community there you see that the acceptability has really improved and therefore i think that the caste is not really a big barrier to indian growth story anymore sure so the elections are happening starting from this month and we'll have the results coming out in uh, early june uh, so the forecast all of them are suggesting to us that the current ruling party bjp which is being uh, headed by mr modi uh, that is supposed to win again so mr modi already had two terms uh, out there last 10 years he had been the prime minister and all the expectations are that he will be the next prime minister as well so there will be continuous uh, 15 years of his tenure which i think is a great news because under his policy making we have seen india progressing very well india reforming very well and therefore uh, we will see further momentum in those uh, uh, reforms happening if he were to uh, 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 return to power uh, there, uh, there have been some uh, great initiatives taken by him both in terms of cleaning up the system and also pushing more and more digital governance and also attracting investments into india so all of that uh, should get more and more push if his party comes back to power again sure so yes uh, bjp is considered a hindu nationalist party uh, and therefore uh, their inclination has been towards more of hindus uh, 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 rather than the entire society uh, but what and this was a big concern when, when mr modi was elected first time as the prime minister that there can be big religious divide in in the country but what we have seen actually happening in the last 10 years is that there have been no big riots happening in india uh, that there is no big religious strife happening in india obviously there are elements of his party who try to take advantage of that inclination uh, by trying to disalienate uh, muslims but modi, mr modi has been more of a statesman and he has been more inclusive out there and therefore uh, we have not really seen the uh, society getting torn apart in in terms of hindu versus muslims so i don't think uh, it should be a big risk also going forward okay uh, so thank you very much for your time today to uh, see uh, and understand uh, how the indian equities story is looking very interesting to us 
and I hope and wish that you can seriously consider it uh, making it a core part of your asset allocation. I believe, I strongly believe that this is once in a lifetime opportunity for you to consider and I hope that you can uh, really make it. Thank you very much for your time today.